children last video we learnt about the fiber that is wool right so we know that animal fibers we have learnt about the wool and now let us learn about the silks these two are the fibers which we are which we obtain from the animals so silk we know very well your mothers love silk sarees right you know from which uh, silk uh, threads are obtained silk is obtained from the silk moth it is obtained from the insect silk is obtained from obtained from silk moth oh, it is an insect silk moth is an insect okay silk is a animal fiber like how wool is woolen which we get it is from the sheep the same way silk is obtained from an insect called silk moth okay the rearing of silk rearing of silk moth the rearing of silk moth is called sericulture so what is sericulture it is the rearing of rearing rearing of silk silk moth or silk worm rearing of silk worm to obtain silk rearing of silk worm to obtain silk is called sericulture so let us see the life cycle or the life history of silk moth life history or the life cycle of silk moth so i have drawn the diagram here so we have a male silk moth or the female silk moth right so the female silk moth will lay eggs it will lay eggs it will lay hundreds of eggs okay and these eggs will hatch out they will hatch out when they hatch out we call it larvae the uh, from the eggs the whatever comes out whatever the insect that is comes out the larvae right it's called the larvae from the uh, eggs the larvae will hatch out which we also call it caterpillar as soon as the larvae comes out it starts feeding it starts feeding and it will start feeding on the mulberry leaves as you know that the silk moth that is female silk moth will lay eggs on the mulberry leaves and these uh, from the uh, eggs the larvae will hatch out as soon as the larvae comes out start feeding on it will day and night will be feeding and it will increase in its size okay uh, so after say some 25 days or something it will if till 25 days it will be eating 25 to 30 days it will be eating day in and day out day and night it will be feeding on the mulberry leaves and they grow enormously they their size will be increased okay as soon as they complete that uh, uh, 25 days or 35 or 30 days then they get, get into the next stage of their life cycle the next stage of life cycle is pupa okay the pupa so as soon as they come to pupa stage they weave a net they weave a net so that they can attach themselves they can hold on to something okay so they grow a net they weave a net and so that they can attach onto something and afterwards what happens is that they will be moving their head in the form of head they move their head in the form of figure a in the form of a it will be moving its head as it moving it will be secreting a fiber it secretes a fiber which is made up of protein and this fiber as soon as it comes out it gets harder and and this continues it will be moving its head in the form of a and it will be secreting that fiber and this fiber as soon as it comes out in contact with the it will get harder and it will completely cover itself with that fiber then we call it cocoon then we call it cocoon right then the inside the cocoon the silk moth will be growing okay so this is the life history of the silk moth let us start with rearing of silk worm so what is rearing of silk worm rearing of silk worm otherwise called sericulture right so we know that rearing of silk worm is called sericulture okay sericulture is the rearing of silk worm okay by now you know what is rearing means rearing is to grow
by providing food, shelter, right, for our benefit we grow them. So that is what we call rearing. So how silkworm is reared? So here we know that the female silk moth, the female silk moth. So we should say silk moth, not silk worm. Okay. So we can address these insect as silk moth. The female silk moth will lay hundreds of eggs. It will lay hundreds of eggs, and these eggs will be kept in a a uh, cloth, a strip of cloth or strip of paper, in a strip of paper and in a strip of cloth, in a strip of cloth or a paper. These eggs will be kept. Okay, they are stored in the strip of paper or strip of cloth. Then it will be store, sold to the farmer. The, store, the farmer will take the silkworm and they will be keeping in a very hygienic condition because it should be very clean. Otherwise, they will die. Maybe some uh, infection or some other insect we may feed on it. So, they have to be kept in a suitable uh, hygienic condition and they are kept in a suitable temperature. So, the temperature should be apt. It should not be too uh, high or too low. It should be just enough for the uh, larvae to hatch out. So larvae will hatch out from the from the eggs, right? After they hatch out, right? They have to feed, and this hatching takes place at that time where the mulberry uh, tree, mulberry will tree will bear fresh leaves. Okay. So you know very well the silk worm or the silk moth will feed on the mulberry leaves. Okay. When the mulberry leaves are bear fresh leaves. At that time, this larvae also will be hatching out and they feed on the mulberry day in and day out. Right? That is day and night, it will be feeding on it and it will become, uh, it will gain enough of weight. Okay? So then, this is the larvae, otherwise it is called caterpillar, will be feeding on the mulberry leaves. Then they feed on the mulberry leaves. Afterwards, what happens? These larvae will be shifted to. They will be shifted to tree of bamboo. Okay, they will have this bamboo tray. So they will be shifted there. Okay, and they will be given provided uh, with uh, some twigs or something so that they can go and attach themselves and they start building the cocoons okay so the larvae after they gain enough of sight they themselves will go and attach themselves in that uh, bamboo tray even the farmers can uh, the one who is uh, rearing the silk moth will be given the twigs so that they can attach themselves and they start spinning the uh, cocoon they start building the cocoon so that is what the rearing of silk worm right so there's a steps in rearing of silk worm that is female silk worm will lay eggs and this uh, eggs will be sold to the farmer and later on the farmer will be keeping the eggs in a suitable uh, condition a very hygienic condition and at a suitable temperature so that the larvae will hatch out as soon as the larvae comes out it starts feeding on they feed on the mulberry leaves they feed on mulberry leaves they keep on eating day in and day out that is day and night they will be feeding on the mulberry leaves later they gain enough of size when enough of weight as they grow in a, into a larger size they themselves go and attack they will be kept in the uh, bamboo tree they will be kept in the bamboo tree and they will atta attach themselves to the bamboo tree or they can be given a way so they, they can uh, attach themselves and they build the cocoons cocoons you would have seen right so that is the how the silk worm is rare we learn how silk worm is rare next we will go to processing of silk okay so we know that the last stage in the uh, life history of the uh, silk moth is forming the cocoon they form the cocoon and the silk moth will be growing inside the cocoon so the cocoon is taken actually to obtain the silk thread the
the cocoon is taken and the, uh, it's not one or two cocoon which is taken a large pile of cocoon is taken and it will be either exposed to sunlight or it will be put in boiling water from which they remove the thread to start separating okay so the process of taking out threads from cocoon for use as silk is called reeling reeling is done okay reeling is done is done using special machines so they use special machines to remove the thread from the silk thread from the cocoon so when they put it in the special machine the thread will come out easily the silk thread will come out easily they get separated the silk thread from the cocoon get separated get separated and the uh, it will be like they will be made into silk yarn then it will be given to the uh, the silk weavers the weavers they will be given to the weavers who will use the yarn to make the silk fabric so silk we get from different we have the uh, many the uh, silk is obtained from different types of silk moth silk is obtained from different types of silk moth and we from the different types of silk moth we have tussar silk we have tussar silk and we have moga kosa iri and mulberry So these are the different types of silk which we obtain from the different types of silk moth. But among all the different types of silk, mulberry silk is most sought after. People prefer mulberry silk. Okay, most of people prefer they like mulberry silk because the silk which is obtained from the mulberry silk moth. Now mulberry mulberry silk. moth okay the silk obtained from the mulberry silk moth is uh, people like it because it is elastic it is lustrous lustrous means it is shiny and it is soft okay so the silk which is obtained from the mulberry silk moth is what people prefer they sort of the they like the uh, silk which is obtained from the silk moth which feed on the mulberry leaves because it is elastic it is lustrous lustrous means it is soft and and mean lustrous means it is shiny and it is soft okay so i think by you have understood whatever uh, we have learned in this lesson that is fiber to fabric okay so go through the video and if you have any doubt you send me the message i'll clarify thank you